Hey, this is Gary with Today for Tomorrow. You know, the little things we do in our daily lives really do make a difference on the health of the planet and the health of our bank accounts. And that's why I designed this series of videos to show you how to save money while saving the planet. Today's video is all about electric cars, how they can help our planet and help save you potentially thousands of dollars. Let's check it out. Let's talk about electric vehicles. Now there's so much information out there. You can go down a rabbit hole on the internet and your head will be spinning four hours later and you don't know what to do. Let's make it simple. Should you buy an electric car? Well, from an environmental standpoint, the short answer is yes. Almost 30% of all greenhouse gas emissions come from the transportation sector. And that's largely us driving our cars. Did you know that your typical driver in a typical car emits around four and a half metric tons of CO2 every year. That's some serious amount of CO2. As a matter of fact, I did a little experiment to show you a visual representation of just how much that is. All right, simple experiment here. I am weighing a balloon on this little digital scale, and you'll see that it's a gram, and then it just flips to two grams, so it's, I guess, two grams. All right, then I blow it up full of air, in an effort to weigh the amount of air inside the balloon, and we still find it's two grams. But we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say that there's a gram worth of air inside the balloon. So by my calculations, it would take four and a half million balloons full of CO2 to equal what is coming out of your car tailpipe each and every year. And I hope that gives you an idea of just how big this problem is. So we know now that from an environmental perspective, we are better off getting that electric car. Now let's talk about dollars and cents. How much money will we actually save, or will we save any money, if we choose an electric car? Okay, so ready to trade my Ram pickup in for this Tesla, right? Well, you got to be careful. Take a look here at the IRS website. In blue here, you can see the language around the rebate. And yes, it's true, all these vehicles these days do have that sort of uh, capacity in their battery, so you will get that 7500 uh, rebate. But look at the blue here, and here's the sticky part. This is really designed to get the auto manufacturers to bring these things to market. So after they hit 200,000 vehicles, like Tesla surely has, that rebate goes away. So you have to be very careful when you shop these vehicles. Tesla does not qualify for the rebate. I believe this Fisker would, however, at $170,000 certainly not going to fit most budgets and it will not qualify as far as I know for the additional incentives in the Build Back Better Act. Here we are looking at a little write-up on that act on the White House website and you can see here in red mentioned about $12,500 so that's an additional $5,000 worth of incentives. Now here's what I know from what I've read on the internet is that that additional incentive is $500 for a battery and $4,500 for a car assembled, built and assembled in the United States. So bringing those jobs from overseas and, and building it here. And also under uh, labor unions. So a little sticky language there. I don't know if they're going to change that. Uh, but anyway, it looks like a good thing if you're going to buy electric vehicles. Now another thing I read, and I'm not positive, but I think you can actually get point of sale rebates. In other words, it doesn't have to be just taken off of your income tax. So that's a good thing if you don't earn a lot of money. And on top of that, I think there may be some provisions here for how much you earn and also for how expensive the vehicle is in order to qualify for those additional $5,000 in incentives. All right, let's talk about the real numbers in terms of operating costs, the difference between gas and electric vehicles. We're gonna take a look at my vehicle. It's a gas pickup truck compared to an electric vehicle. Look at kilowatt hours versus miles per gallon, all that good stuff, and get the real numbers. Let's check it out. Okay, let's talk about what everyone thinks about is how much money am I going to save on gas if I buy an electric car. We're going to use my car as an example. I drive a pickup truck, and we're going to use my state kilowatt hours price and my state gas price. Of course, it's going to vary a little bit, but it'll give you an idea. So I live in Florida. We have relatively cheap electricity at 14 cents, give or take, per kilowatt hour. And I have probably on the cheap side of gas, it's close to the average though, we're maybe 320 right now uh, at the pump per gallon. So when you do all the math, and I'll save you all the computations, 
What it boils down to is this. I fill my truck up twice a week. I do a lot of driving. It's roughly 70 bucks each time, so $140 a week. I could fill my truck up or charge, rather, an electric vehicle for $14 per charge, so $28 per week to do the same amount of driving. That's a huge savings when you calculate that out for the whole year. It's thousands of dollars. Now, I am so happy that a major car manufacturer is bringing out a pickup truck, an electric pickup truck, this year. You better believe I'm looking at it. If you're a truck driver, you should look at it too. Okay, well we've seen that there are some serious reasons, environmentally speaking, to go ahead and buy that electric car. And there are also some serious reasons in terms of economics to go ahead and buy that electric car. So I hope this video helped motivate you, if you're in the market or soon will be, to buy a car, to go ahead and test drive those electric vehicles. Remember, it's the little things we do in our daily lives today, like buying an electric car, that really do make a big impact on all of our tomorrows. Thank you so much for watching.